All right. So over the last couple of lessons, we were learning about implicit differentiation. And I'll be giving you guys an assignment for you to work on over spring break about implicit differentiation. But I'm not, but we're not quite done with the things I want you to, I want us to cover before we're gone for a week. I would like us to learn about the derivatives of logarithms and exponentials. So, let's get down to business. Okay, our objective today is that students It's spring break, yay! Exciting. Students will be able to find derivatives of logarithms. and exponentials is E derivatives. Okay, so we have a lot of ground to cover, so we're just gonna get right into it. Now, so our, my main goal today is that we'll be able to find derivatives of logarithms and exponentials of base e. If possible, if we have time, we'll be able to do the same for logarithms of any base. But our top priority is base e. So let's remind ourselves for a moment. What exactly is an exponential? Now you learned about exponentials back in um, uh, back in pre-calculus and over two. What what is an exponential? An exponential is a function of the form f of x equals e, or sorry, f of x equals a times b to the x. Where a is not equal to zero, and b is greater than and b is greater than zero, and b can't equal one. 
So B is can be any positive number except one. So, so what do these look like? Let's just very quickly remind ourselves what exponentials look like. A times B to the X power. Now B is not allowed to be one, so there we go. So an exponential, as you can see, has a long, asymptotic tail. So it has this long level tail. But as we go up to positive values, it begins to blow up and go up and up to infinity. As b gets larger, our exponential gets steeper. And if b is less than 1, our exponential experiences exponential decay instead of growth. A changes the y-intercept. A is 1.8, our y-intercept is 1.8. So, Exponentials are used in real life to describe systems in which the more of something you have, the faster it grows. Or that's exponential growth. There's also exponential decay, which says the more of something you have, the faster it grows. An example of exponential growth would be, say, the population of sheep in a herd. If you have two sheep, you'll if you have two sheep, then your herd will only have so many babies, only have so many babies in a given year. I don't know how often she that is. Mm, once a year, twice a year. So if you have two sheep, mother and father, then you might your herd might grow by one to two sheep per year. But if you have a hundred sheep, then your herd will might grow a lot more than one sheep. So the more of it you have, the faster it grows. Now, so that's an exponential, and you can have exponential growth or exponential decay. A good example of exponential decay would be the amount of a drug in your bloodstream. Your body metabolizes your body metabolizes drugs by, when it's dissolved in your bloodstream, it will attach to certain receptors in different types of cells, maybe in your brain, maybe, maybe in nerves, nerves, or whatever. And the more of it you have in your system, the faster that those chemicals and the drugs will bind to where they need to go, which means that the more of it is in your blood, the faster they'll get used up in the just for example. That's the reason why drugs, why a, a drug when it's taken will have a, a powerful effect at first, but then uh, but then level off of it to, to nothing. This is true whether it's whether it's uh, whether the drug is ibuprofen or heroin. And that's also a reason, and because exponential decay has a long tail, that's also has a long tail where it levels takes a long time to level off. That's the reason why drug tests, uh, marijuana. That's the reason why those drug tests be sensitive long after someone flashes the drug. Anyway, so that's an exponential. Now, what is a logarithm?
to a logarithm is a function that is the inverse of an exponential. We learned all about inverses back in pre-calculus. So for example, the inverse of f of x equals, let's say, 6 to the x power. is the logarithm of base 6. So wherein, so a logarithm, so a logarithm, we've, when we've learned about logarithms, we thought of them at first and we called them That's a good way to remember. what these mean. So this is asking, so this would output the power we'd give six to get x. So for example, if I plug in 36, it would output two because six to the second power would give us 36. Fair enough? So let's really quick take a look at what log take a look at logarithms in Desmos. Desmos. Okay. Now, every logarithm has a base. It could be base 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or whatever. Let's go with log of base 10. Now logarithms have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. And they increase forever. Now note that this does not actually have a horizontal asymptote. If you keep following it long enough, it will grow beyond any limit you choose, beyond any upper this actually, so logarithms, although they look like they level off, they actually don't have a horizontal asymptote. And as, as I mentioned, logarithms are the inverses of exponentials. Remember that one of the things we learned about inverses back in pre-calculus is that an inverse geometrically looks like the reflection across the line y equals x. So you see how these are reflections of each other across that line? But they're inverses. All right. So that's the quick reminder of, of uh, what logarithms are, what logarithms and exponentials are. Okay, got it. And, Okay.
Now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? No yelling? Okay. So now let's actually talk about calculus. And let's see. Okay. Now, there is one very special exponential function. And this exponential function has a, has a truly remarkable Now first, what is E? Does anyone remember what this E thing is? Anybody? E, what is E? E is a number, like pi, is sometimes called Euler's constant. And you know how pi is an is an is a uh, rational number. It can't be written as a fraction, so it 3.141529, it just keeps on going forever. Euler's constant is also an irrational number. And E is about 2.71. I think it's, let's ditch that. I think it's, no, 1.7182. So it's about 2.7. But this particular exponential has a really remarkable property, something that is really special, really cool. Its slope at a point is equal to its y value 
at that point. In other words, e to the x is its own derivative. And this is really cool. So, the derivative with respect to x of e to the x equal to e to the x. That's awesome. Let me show you in Desmos. So Desmos is smart enough to actually be able to graph derivatives for you. If you do f of x equals m, making f of x, then if you type f prime x, it will graph the derivative for you. We can see here our slope is negative, levels off, but the slope hits zero right there where it becomes level. So our slope, our derivative is negative, becomes less negative until it hits a value of zero, then it becomes negative. So apparently somewhere the slope turns back around. Isn't that it? There it is. Yeah. So anyway, but take a look at take a look at e to the x. E to the x is its own derivative. How cool is that? It's so cool is what it is. And no other function has this property. If I change the base to say three, you can see that our derivative is similar, but not quite the same. So, so long an exponential with e, to e as its base is its own derivative. And that's Crazy awesome. So we can also write this rule, write this rule so that it uh, has the chain rule built in. The derivative with respect to x of e to the u power is equal to e to the u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So we're taking the derivative of this thing, which is going to be the derivative of the outside, which because it's e to the x itself, the inside is left intact and we're multiplying by the derivative of the inside. So this rule is the same as this rule. It just has the chain rule built in. All right. Now this is just awesome beyond words. But and because of this property, e to the x is really important in a lot of different calculus applications. Now we've talked about e to the x before in pre-calculus, but I didn't really talk about what makes e so special, why we care about e. And this is why, because it is its own derivative. And that gives it very powerful applications in a, a number of, in uh, the field of differential equations, so, which are equations that themselves involve. Okay. Now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay, no yelling. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, the inverse of f of x equals e to the x is, as previously covered, a logarithm. In this case, it would be log of base e. The base of the exponential is the base of the log. Now this log has a special name and symbol. The natural logarithm ln of x. Nobody is totally sure why the natural logarithm is represented with an ln. You can probably blame Euler, the same guy who discovered that number and, and a lot of other things. He was a, uh, Euler was a, uh, in some other small, very Latin European country. And so it probably stands for log L. So it's actually pretty easy to find the derivative of the, to determine the formula for the derivative of a natural logarithm. So how much time have we got? Okay. So let's derive y equals natural log of x. Now, we know that from the in, we know that since uh, natural log and e to the x are inverses, through the inverse relationship, this means that e to the y is equal to x. These two are equivalent statements. Now, we just found out how to find the derivative of, so now uh, we can differentiate implicitly and solve for dy dx, and we'll have a formula for um, uh, for the derivative of the of the natural log of x. So, on the right side, the derivative of x is one, and on the left side, the derivative of e to the y is itself because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x but we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of y is dy dx. Now, uh, we need to isolate the dy dx, so we'll divide both sides by e to the y. And this will give us dy dx is equal to one over e to the y, ah, but e to the y, but e to the y is equal to x, which means that the derivative is 1 over x. So the derivative of the natural log equal to 1 over x. Simple enough. Now, if we want to have the rule with the chain rule built in, the derivative of the natural log of a thing is equal to 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing.
Oh, someone's coming in. To adjust. All right. Okay, we good? And so that is the derivative of the natural log. Okay, now let's go ahead and do some examples of derivatives with exponent with e to the x and natural log. We'll just do a couple of real simple examples just so you can get a feel for how Can I take this away? No yelling? No yelling. So, let's say let's say that f of x equals e to the x squared plus x. And let's also say that g of x is equal to the natural log of sine of x. So let's find f prime of x and g prime of x. So remember, I'll just go ahead and get the rules, the important rules down here on the side. That the derivative of e to the u is equal to e to the u times du dx. In other words, the derivative e to the thing is itself, you know, just following the chain rule. And the derivative of the natural log of a thing is equal to one over that thing times the derivative of that thing. So the derivative of the natural log of x is one over x. This is just, again, these are just the, those rules with the same rule. Okay, so let's find f prime. Well, our u here is x squared plus x. So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. The derivative of e to the x is itself. But we need to make sure to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the outside, the inside left intact, times the derivative of the inside. So uh, what's the derivative of x squared plus x? What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. Mm -hmm. And what's the derivative of x? The derivative of x. Ah, yeah, someone got there in the private chat. One. Derivative of just x is one. So there we go. The derivative of e to of e to the u, or the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of u. The der derivative of e to the x is itself. Isn't that just cool? Man, 
love it. I love it. Okay. Really excited around this. I will have to teach you the next. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try the derivative of this natural log. So we want to find the derivative of the natural log of sine of x. So here our u, our inside function, is sine. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over the inside. So what's going to go down here? Cosine? Mm, no, remember that the inside is left intact. We don't take the derivative. Oh, just sine. Yeah, you got it. Chain rule says we need to leave the derivative intact. But we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what will we multiply by? Cosine. Cosine is the derivative of sine. Is Which means that, you know, this, this is correct, but it's also not fully simplified. Uh, this would actually simplify out to cosine, you know, this one over sine times cosine over one there. That's cosine over sine, isn't it? Which is cotangent. So we could simplify this to cotangent. Fair enough? Now, these derivatives are truly remarkable because they're super easy, <laughs> for one thing. Exponentials and logarithms can occasionally be nasty and ugly, but their derivatives are actually really easy to work with. And because this ease of, this ease of working with is, makes them very important for, for uh, advanced applications where you need all the simplicity you can get. Okay, how much time we got left? We got 15 minutes left. Okay, we have enough time. So, will anyone yell at me if I take these away? Uh, yeah. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, we're good, just to be clear. I think I'm bringing it back. All right, uh, let's see, need a fresh board here. Mm, so, fresh board. Fresh, 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 fresh board. All right. So we do have enough time. So enough time to look at the last few rules here. Okay. Now the very last rule, the last rule you want to look at today. What about for logs and exponentials? of any base.
Now these ones unfortunately aren't quite as beautiful and elegant as um, uh, the natural logarithm and the, uh, and the natural exponential. But these rules both come from the same place. They both come from the change of base formula. But I'm not gonna go through the derivation. I'm not gonna show you how, these, how this formula came to be. Just gonna go skip straight to getting the formula. The derivative of a to the x is equal to a to the x times the natural log of a. And to be clear, this is just where a is in, where a is a constant. And of course, a it needs to be greater than zero, and a can't be. Okay. So, pretty straightforward. The deri derivative of an exponential of any base. Uh oh. So the derivative of an exponential of any base is the derivative of that exponential times the natural log of the base. It's not really dramatically more complicated than e, to the, than e to the x. You just need to multiply by natural log of the base when you're done. And of course, we could also write it with the chain rule built in. The derivative of a to the u is equal to a to the u times the natural log of a times the derivative of the inside. Pretty straightforward, really. Okay, so that's for a that's for a uh, that's for an exponential of any base. What about a log of any base? Similar. The derivative of a log of any base of x is equal to one over x. Okay, cool. But you know how we had to multiply by the natural log base a? Well, instead we're going to be dividing by the natural log. Base. Fair enough. So once again, we can build in the chain rule. The log of any base of some function u is equal to one over the inside and back. And the natural log of that base underneath. What we're really doing is we're dividing by natural log of base A, but it simplifies to this, times the derivative of U with a And there we have it. Now, these logarithms, logarithms and exponentials are really important in calculus, even more than they are in other fields because of these derivatives. There are real-life systems that are described by exponentials and logarithms. 
so they do have very so they do have very useful real life but they also because of these because of the nature of the, of these derivatives they also have important purely mathematical applications abstract applications that are just as important All right, so I think with that, that is where we can, I think that's all we needed to cover for today's lesson. If you want to see some more examples, then if, you, uh, I know that we didn't cover any examples of this, but if you would like applicant, if you'd like to see some examples of how to work with, work with these, you can come in during asynchronous time today and I'll work some examples with you. If anyone comes in, then I'll record it. Throw, I'll record the examples and throw them up on a uh, on Canvas for you. If you want to do that, just come on by. So, but I think that that is where we can leave off. So, today we learned how to find the derivatives of exponentials and logarithms, both of base e and of any base. So, I think that's about where we can leave off. I will be giving you guys homework to do over spring break. Uh, I'll be giving you guys some uh, some I'll be giving you guys a worksheet on uh, implicit differentiation, which we talked about earlier this week, and I'll also give you worksheet stuff on derivatives of logarithms. It shouldn't be too bad. I'm certainly not trying to work you to death, but you do nonetheless need to get some practice in, and I want to make sure to, that you. And they want to keep your skills sharp over spring break. So I'll be so keep an eye out on Canvas for that later today. Come in this afternoon if you want to try some examples of derivatives of logs and exponentials of any base. And if that's everything, and I think that's everything we need to talk about. So you guys have a great day and a great spring break. And I'll see you guys in a little bit more than a week. Later, Lou. Have a good rest of your day and have a really great um, spring break. I will. Bye-bye.